In this video, we are going to be talking about the best board breaker for the current format. Now, this is a card that people are either debating on playing or just are already playing. Hopefully, after you watch my video, you guys have a greater understanding of it. And of course, guys, we finally hit 7,000 subscribers, but don't worry, I have a giveaway announcement very, very soon. And without further ado, guys, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get right into the video. All right, guys, we are, of course, going to be talking about super polymerization. It took me way too many tries to get that intro right. But basically, super poly says this. Discard one card, fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using monsters from either field as fusion material, and then neither player can activate cards or effects in response to this card activation. Main thing is you can use um, materials from either side of the field, so your field and your opponent's field or just your opponent's field. And then it is also a spell speed 5 million, so your opponent cannot respond to this card, so Solemn Judgment doesn't stop this card, things of that nature. But, of course, guys, you guys can see I have all sorts of monsters, and then I have all sorts of extra monsters and things of that nature. I will be breaking down almost each and every matchup that you'll most likely encounter. You guys can see here we have five fusion monsters, so I'm going to be talking about them. And the first being Guilty, Gear Freed, the Magical Steel Knight. Now, this is a very underrated card. It hasn't really seen a lot of play up until now, in my opinion. And its effect is this. So you can make it by using two warrior monsters with different attributes. So now that's very important to note. I will explain exactly why, um, you know, moving on. But the effect is once per turn, when a card or effect is activated, that targets this card quick effect, negate the effect. And if you do destroy one card on the field. So again, kind of like a master of blades in that sense where he can negate the effect. He doesn't destroy that effect but then he can destroy another card on the field and then if this card was fusion summon using only monsters on the field as material it can make a second attack during each battle phase once per turn if this card battles an opponent's monster during damage calc you can banish one spell from your graveyard this card gains attack equal to half its current defense so again it's pretty good because he also gains 800 attack i actually didn't even know he had that effect so most likely what you're going to do is you're going to super poly discard fuse away two of your opponent's monsters so now he already has his double battle phase effect and because you have the super poly in the graveyard already you'll get the 800 attack boost so he can attack over all sorts of monsters he also gets a double attacking ability as well and he can also kind of be immune to targeting effects where he can negate it i believe that that is once yeah so that's once return but everything else isn't so i mean Guilty Gifter is really good. The reason why I'm saying he is really good is if you're playing against a deck like, for example, like Tier Element, where they have Rhino Heart and a Baron on board, um, you know, when they do like the Destrudo thing or even like the Diviner play, you can go ahead and Super Poly the monster away because Rhino Heart is a warrior similar to Baron. Now, if you don't want to Super Poly the Rhino Heart away because he's not really threatening you, they do end on SP as well. So if you go against Tier Element and they end on SP Baron, you can go ahead and Super Poly. The reason being, it says two monsters with different attributes. Of course, it says different attributes, not the same attributes. So again, if they have something like a Charles the Great and a phoenix gear for you on the board you cannot super poly that but if they do end on baron sp or charles plus baron or sp for example infernoble is doing that a lot now you can super poly the guilty gear feed so again remember that the attributes are very important but it is specific to warriors so again the application is very niche but again against decks like for example manadium where they end on baron and sp as well it is really good similar to rescue ace where they're ending on baron and sp as well so again because baron and sp is going to be on a lot of end boards super poly in the main deck isn't going to be bad especially with Guilty Gear Freed. I feel like this card is going to be very important, being able to play it, things of that nature. And then it also does well or like decent into Unchained, Rescue Ace, and Tier because it kind of prevents a lot of the targeting, which all of them do. So if you have Super Poly in your hand and, and you're main decking it, it's not bad against any of those decks. But moving on, guys, we will be talking about Mud Dragon. Now, Mud Dragon is very similar to Guilty Gear Freed in where he is quote-unquote generic. He has two monsters with the same attribute, but different types. It is a little tricky, but I'll explain it. Trust me, because I also don't know what I'm talking about. Your opponent cannot target this card or monsters on the field with the same attribute of this card with card effects. Once per turn, you can declare one attribute. This card becomes the attribute. So when he's summoned, and if you have any water monsters, it works really well in tier. If you have any water monsters, they cannot target it. And then you can declare an attribute of a monster that you're going to summon later on, or monsters that you have that you just want to protect. And then you get the inherent protection as that. So any combination of cards like Dweller, Toad, and Rukalos against decks like um, Tier Element, for example, because you want to be able to get two monsters with the same attribute but different types. So you want like Aquas, you want like Sea Serpents, things of that nature. Um, Appaloosa plus Baron against Manadium and Infernoble also work because you're going to be looking here you have Appaloosa who is going to be a wind fairy and a baron who is also going to be a wind warrior so it works really well um in that case as well and again manadium is also ending on like all sorts of other monsters but it is good against infernoble the only thing is infernoble is not really ending on Appaloosa baron too consistently you want to kind of focus on guilty gear Freed more against that deck um and then you also have and this is probably going to be the main one and i hope you guys really pay attention to this it is going to be crimson dragon and legatia and the reason why that 
works is because they're both light but then one's a dragon and one a machine so of course mud dragon works very well into that and then it's a, one of those rare cards that's very hard for them to play into especially because the crimson dragon play is very telegraphed so when you main extra poly they go into crimson dragon you just wait for them to use crimson dragon effect you don't do it like on the summon of crimson dragon you just want to be able to deplete their resources as much as possible so of course being able to super poly them is really nice and then again against um the terror hurts dot deck like rescue ace you can normally summon any dark monster for here i decided to just showcase current of the dark ones because it's literally the most irrelevant dark monster i can think of so you can literally normal summon this card activate super poly and then fuse away terror hurts plus the dark monster and it gets really really like nasty because you end up out in their entire negate board and everything and again a sandworm can't negate that because super poly is spell fee 5 million and again like i said for it does really well into other targeting decks as well just because mud dragon can protect your board so you can go like mud dragon you can call fire against like say for example you're playing infernoble you can go mud dragon call fire and now all of your monsters are protected or you can go mud dragon call light and then the isold you summon later on is really good or you can just leave him as a water or call dark and protect your sp so again mud dragon is another one mud dragon is probably going to be one of the more popular ones um guilty gifry is probably going to be actually at the end of the video i'll do like a quick tier list about like what i think are the most important ones but speaking of important ones and this is going to be a very popular one it's going to be garura so garura is really good because he says this he she says this i don't really know it's a two-headed guy so maybe it's both but two monsters with the same type and attribute but different names any battle damage your opponent takes from battles involving this card is double so again that's honestly in my opinion a very secret effect of garura because this is the only effect that people remember if this card is sent to the graveyard you can draw one card but the double battle damage is pretty legit because if he attacks directly you take 3k so i mean he's a 1500 weenie but when he attacks directly he does 3k so he becomes a blue eye so he's pretty legit but again he is one of the more generic ones two monsters with the same type in attribute and that's very important to note but he also has but different names so the reason why i say that it's pretty important is um if you have double emperor charles on board your opponent cannot supply that into a garur because it's two monsters with the same type and attribute similar oh, but different names so similar if they end on like an sp little knight or an isold plus double emperor charles they can't supply that board so it's pretty good but the main reasons why you play this card is like against cards like charles and gear free for example because it's two monsters with the same type and attribute so again two fire warriors but different names so you can definitely super poly that board away it's pretty good um you can also do appaloosa and baron against or sorry you can also do um rakea and caesar against um the unchained deck um it's just like another application that you have against it it's sometimes they summon rakea because it's a quick effect to target a card you control and destroy it so if you like out their board and they start doing a little bit of shenanigans you can absolutely super poly that board away um you can also do any two labyrinth monsters for, um and that's of course going to be against labyrinth because they're all like different or the same type and attributes sorry but different names so again it just goes to show you that you can main deck super poly and you could just kind of do anything and then very similar to any combo of preventer hydrant turbulence so again you got fire machine fire machine fire machine so you guys see what i mean and a lot of the times um post side as well where they're kind of ending on just like hydrant turbulence because they're trying to play around a lot of hand traps or maybe they do hydrant and then they summon out the preventer later on you can still super poly that board so guru is really good and then she also has like the additional effect or sorry the additional benefit of being a level six so tier can make beatrice very very easy so again tier is a fusion deck so like i said before they can super poly it and also works pretty well in centurion as well because it's going to be a level six monster so Primera plus Garura is going to go into like a free Baron, a free 10, things of that nature. So it makes it really good. And then those, in my opinion, are the more quote unquote generic ones or the ones that you should be playing for sure. So again, Mudra and Garura are probably tied for one and two. And then Gear Feed is going to be three. But in my opinion, those three should definitely be in, in like extra decks or side decks, if anything. Moving on to some more niche cards, we're going to be talking about Dragon Knight, Draco Equest or Equisty or whatever. Um, this card's really good, but it is very niche and it only depends on the metagame. So if a lot of people are summoning or playing Manate, it works really well with this pattern and baron so again this pattern is going to be the dragon synchro so Draco quest has one dragon synchro plus one warrior monster. so again you guys can see but he also has a good effect so that's what i like about these fusion monsters when you're summoning them it's not like they're just like vanillas on the board they all have really good effects so this one says must be fusion seven we're super appalling we don't care once per turn you can target one dragon synchro monster in the graveyard banish that target and if you do until the end phase this card's name becomes that monsters and replace this effect with the original effect while this card's in attack position your opponent takes any effect damage i mean i don't know if you're playing against trickstar or something but um the second effect isn't really gonna work but i mean it's a secret effect to note but the main effect is after you super poly their board you can use draco quest to go ahead and banish um become dispatter and then revive dispatter so it gets pretty legit um in that regard so um that's it for draco quest and then moving on of course dragos the is just like one of the more generic cards um in what he does because he's just like one fusion monster plus one dark monster so a lot of the times like even if you get super poly you can like super poly your opponent back um and things of that nature so again drag spill is pretty good so that was it for like the five generic fusion monsters i would say and then just one quick niche interaction that i remembered is when they end up going to the um x purely noir you wait for one effect activation because they really only have 
like i think it's like five to six materials they usually do so you let them do the first one and then literally any dark monster plus um curtain of the dark ones or whatever or sorry any dark monster plus uh x pearly noir ends up getting into mud dragon so you still end up finding a way to out the board and honestly pearly noir is very annoying but they're not gonna win if they don't use the effect so you just force them to use their first effect and then you out it with cards like super poly talents things of that nature so then again it is a really good and legit way to out x pearly noir so in conclusion just about super poly and just how kind of these cards kind of relate to other cards um i believe that against centurion it's a 10 out of 10 card in my opinion 9 to 10 out of 10 in my opinion i think it's very good being able to out crimson dragon and legatia and then being able to prevent the calamity lock without kind of diving too deep into the, like the sauce bag and getting things by the way i will have a how to beat centurion video because there's some really important rulings that you guys need to know but moving on um i think that again it's 10 out of 10 against centurion against Man manadium you guys can see like bestial disc Batter, you got baron you got appaloosa you got um sp you got all these other cards and end boards that they're ending on so again so probably goes crazy so probably 9 out of 10 10 out of 10 um against chairman it's an 8 out of 10 some boards play around it and their monsters float and it does get annoying but again this is if you're like maining it or just trying to justify playing super poly you know what i mean um i think collider hearts the only one that you can't super poly so just make sure you guys remember that because it can't be used as fusion material against rescue ace or race it's okay it's like a 7 out of 10 8 out of 10 um there's too much variance on the end board in my opinion um it's it's not bad if you're making a like, guilty gear for you with like the whole sp baron but i mean you're not really playing draco quest um anyways because like they're not really doing baron savage that much so it's like it's okay but i mean if it resolves it's pretty decent um and similar to labyrinth where like it can be awkward at times but it's good if it resolves but i mean that's only if you're justifying it against unchanged you guys saw like i only had like one reason for it. it's like super mid um it's hard to make live without committing and rakea isn't usually on the end board and then against purely it's like super garbage the only reason why i showed you guys that interaction or that i guess the reason for it is if you main deck it um super poly is like it's your only way to kind of out the monster um and it's pretty good because you can push through the follow-up but even then it's like a two out of ten otherwise it's like a zero out of ten and against infernoble it's really risky because again we are putting up angel ring um so our board's not gonna lose her super poly so it's like a zero out of ten but again if you open double super poly it's like pretty cash money um also it's a nine out of ten if you deal with the angel ring first um because guilty gear is like really op against that deck um in my opinion and not just my opinion but a lot of other opinions as well we all know um because now he goes to the 36 he clears both monsters as well and then you can't target him then he gets very problematic moving on forward so again guys like i said before i broke down the best decks i broke down centurion rescue ace labyrinth unchained chill mint even infernoble even manadium the random 2x as well guys if you guys share similar opinions or just different opinions maybe i missed a fusion monster right you know what i mean so please guys let me know down below by commenting again i have my giveaway coming very soon so stay tuned for that check out my instagram check out all the links down below guys my name is hamza like i always say keep on shining never on dreams peace